All right, this is section 7.6, quadratic functions. Today, we are going to analyze a quadratic function, draw its graph, and learn how to find its minimum and maximum values. You'll also learn how to find zeros, determine its range and its domain, a whole bunch of things today. So yesterday, you learned how to graph it, learn how to shift it. Today, you're going to analyze a parabola. A quadratic function is a function that can be written in either of two forms. In both of these cases, a can't be equal to zero, because if a were equal to zero in either of these, you wouldn't have a quadratic function. You'd have a line. So the general form is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is similar to what you've seen as the quadratic equation that you plugged into the quadratic formula. So keep in mind, a goes with the x squared, b goes with the linear part of the x and c is constant. You can also write it in completed square form, which is what we've been doing the last couple days. f of x equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. Now we've seen the k on this side, but you can put it on this side when you express it as a function of x. So example one, show that the graph of g of x equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 7 is a parabola. So, first thing you want to do is convert it to the form that we used yesterday. y minus k equals a times x minus h squared. So, let's, instead of having a g of x, put in a y. Now to subtract both sides, 7, so you get y minus 7 equals 3x squared minus 12x. Now you factor out a 3, and you have to now complete the square. So you're going to complete the square for this x squared minus 4x part. To do that, you need to add 4, because negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. And then you're going to have to add the same thing to the other side. But you're not adding 4. You're adding 3 times 4. So you're actually going to add 12 to the left side of the equation. You simplify that. This becomes y plus 5. x minus 4x plus 4. x squared minus 4x plus 4 is x minus 2 squared. Remember, the negative 2 comes from negative 4 divided by 2. So this looks like a parabola because it's in the same form as this y minus k equals a times x minus h squared. So to convert the function into this form, move the constants over to the side with the y, factor out any number that goes with the x, and you might end up with a fraction here, and then complete the square. Once you complete the square, make sure you add the same amount to the left side, simplify the equation, and draw your conclusion. So if we were to graph this, y plus 5 equals 3 times x minus 2 squared, we know our vertex is 2, negative 5, because here our h value is 2, and our k value is negative 5. So you plot the vertex, that's a good starting point. Now you want to sketch points one unit to each side. So because your a value is 3, it's going to be narrower and steeper than a y equals x squared parabola. So instead of going over 1, up 1 for the first unit, you're going to go over 1, up 3, and the same on both sides. Then you're going to go up to here, and it's going to be a mirror image, and you plot your graph. And don't forget, you can always check your answers on a graphing calculator or some online graph, because why not use technology if you have it? The completing the square method. The quadratic function y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is equivalent to that. y minus the quantity negative b squared minus 4ac over 4a equals a times the quantity x minus negative b over 2a squared. So if that's your equation, your vertex h comma k is this thing, negative b over 2a for, x, for h, negative b squared minus 4ac over 4a for k. Now, from a practical standpoint, the only thing you really have to remember is the x part, the negative b over 2a. One, that's a little easier to remember because that looks familiar from completing the square. To figure out the k value, you just have to figure out what the h value is, plug that into your equation or your function, and then solve for the k value. So you really only have to remember that the x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a because you can calculate k. Let's see how this works. Find the vertex of the graph f of x equals 3 plus 4x minus x squared. So you know that a is negative 1 and b is 4. How do you know that? Remember the a is the coefficient of the quadratic or x squared term. Here the coefficient is negative 1. 
b is 4 because the coefficient of the x term, or the linear term, is 4. So the x coordinate of the vertex, remember, is negative b over 2a. So we just plug in these numbers to get that value. Negative b over 2a is negative 4 over 2 times negative 1. So this is 4 divided by negative 2, which is negative 2. Negative negative 2 is 2. So to solve for the y value of the vertex, you plug in 2 for the value of x in here and solve for f of x. So f of 2 equals 3 plus 4 times 2 minus 2 squared. So we're just plugging 2 into this original function. And you get a value of 7 for x is 2. So, since your x is 2, your function of uh, x is 7, which is your y value, your vertex is at 2, 7. So, remember, you can figure out a and b just by looking at the equation of the parabola and figuring out what the coefficients are. Figure out the x coordinate of the vertex by plugging it in using negative b over 2a. Once you figure out the x value, plug it into the original function, that given that value of x, and that will solve for the y coordinate of the vertex. Now, find the domain range and zeros of f of x equals 3 plus 4x minus x squared. So, for the domain, we have no problems with any real value of x. There is no value of x that will yield us an undefined value or something that won't work. So, the domain is all real values of x. For the range, we want to ask ourselves, what is a? Is a positive or negative? Remember, a is the coefficient of the quadratic term. So, here it's negative 1. A positive a makes the parabola open upward like a u. A negative a makes the parabola open downward like an upside down u. Here, since your a value is negative 1, your a is negative. So the parabola opens downward. What that means is your vertex, which is the top of the parabola, represents the highest point. So since the vertex is 2, 7, the range is f of x less than or equal to 7. Because if you look at your graph, the highest point of f of x is 7. Every other value of f of x is less than that. So that tells you if your range is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Since it's opening downward, your range is less than or equal to 7. Now let's find the zeros. So to find the zeros, you're going to set f of x equal to 0 and solve for x. So it's just like solving any other quadratic equation. So we have 0 equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 3. So you just use the quadratic formula. Negative 4 is negative b plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 3 all over 2 times negative 1. So if you do that, you get negative 4 plus or minus radical 28 over negative 2. And as you simplify, whoops, you end up with x being 2 plus or minus radical 7 and those represent your roots. So to solve for the roots or the zeros, set f of x equals 0 and solve using either factoring the quadratic formula or completing the square if you want. Maximum minimum value. If we have a function where ax squared plus bx plus c is f of x and a is not equal to 0, if your a is less than 0, which is what I just talked about in the previous example, the function has a maximum value because it opens downward, so it's like an upside down U, like this St. Louis arch you see in the background. If A is greater than zero, that means your parabola opens upward like a regular U. So the lowest point is the vertex, F has a minimum value. So if A is negative, the function has a maximum. If A is positive, the function has a minimum. And if you can't remember w this, just remember that if it's negative, it opens down. Well, if it opens down, the vertex is at the top, that's the highest point. If it's positive, it opens up, the vertex is at the bottom, so that's the lowest point. The graph of f is a parabola. The maximum or minimum value of f is the y-coordinate when x equals negative b over 2a at the vertex of the graph. So this kind of puts together what we just did. When you put in negative b over 2a in a parabola written in this form, a function, that will give you the x-coordinate. You plug that value of x in for the function, and that tells you the y-coordinate. Together, those represent the vertex of the graph. So that's something that we did in the previous example. All right, let's look at example three. Determine whether the function has a minimum or maximum, and then find this value. So here is your function. So let's go through this. First, we want to know what the value of a is. So the a is 4. So the f of x has a minimum, because it's going to open upward. 
Where's my mouse? There it is. So it's going to open upward. So if f of x has a minimum, the minimum is going to be where the vertex is. So the vertex is x equals negative b over 2a. So you solve for x. Plug in, negative, uh, plug in 8 for b, plug in 4 for a, and then take the negative and multiply the denominator by 2. So your x is negative 1. To find the y coordinate of the vertex, you just plug in negative 1 for x and solve. So if you plug in negative 1, you get 4 times negative 1 squared plus 8 times negative 1 minus 1. If you do that, you see that f of negative 1, or the y value of the vertex, is negative 5. So the coordinate of your vertex is 1, negative 1, negative 5. The minimum is negative 5. So again, the way to do this, figure out whether a is positive or negative. If it's positive, it's going to have a minimum. Then you just solve for the x-coordinate of the vertex by using negative b over 2a. Once you figure out the x-coordinate, plug that back into the function to figure out the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate will tell you the minimum or the maximum of this function. In this case, the minimum because your a is positive. Now let's find the domain range and zeros. So the domain continues to be f of x for all real values of x. And the range, again, we know that the minimum is at negative 5. So, if that's the minimum, all values of f of x have to be greater than or equal to it. So our range is f of x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So once you calculate the vertex, it's pretty easy to figure out the range by using the y-coordinate of the vertex and whether it opens up or down. Finally, to find the zeros, let's solve this. Plug in 0 for f of x and solve for x. And if you use the quadratic formula, you will get negative 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. So your roots are negative 1 plus or minus radical 5 over 2. So you can use the quadratic formula. You can complete the square. Either way, this is your answer. All right, now we have example four. I would like you guys to attempt this one yourself. Follow the steps we use in examples two and three to see if you can figure out the answer. All right, so we have f of x equals negative 2x squared minus 12x. What is a? a is negative 2, so your f of x has a maximum value. So your parabola is going to open downward. So if it's downward, your f of x has a maximum. The maximum is at the vertex where x equals negative b over 2a. So to figure out the x value, plug in b and a. b is negative 12, a is negative 2. So you plug that into the equation, and you get a value of x that's equal to negative 3. So to find the maximum value, you plug in negative 3 for the function, and you solve. So you plug in negative 3 for x, so you get negative 2 times negative 3 squared, minus 12 times negative 3, and this yields you a value of 18. So the maximum value of the graph of the function is 18. Now let's find the domain range and zeros. The domain is still all real values of x. For the range, because our a is negative 2 and our maximum is 18, we know that because this is a maximum, all the values of f of x have to be less than or equal to this value because the graph opens downward. So the range is f of x is such that f of x is less than or equal to 18. Finally, to find the zeros, let's set f of x equal to 0. You can start out by dividing both sides by negative 2. And that gives you x squared plus 6x equals 0. So if you factor that, you don't have to use the quadratic formula this time, you get x is 0 or 6. So your roots are at 0 and 6. So if you actually graph this function, the two places where it intersects the x-axis are where x is equal to 0 and where x is equal to 6. And that tells you the solutions of the equation if you graph the parabola. All right, let's wrap this up. Here's a summary. If y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, then the vertex of this function or this equation is at h comma k. To do that, just Remember that h is negative b over 2a for x. Plug that value in back to here to find the y coordinate of the vertex. If a is greater than 0, the parabola has a minimum value because it opens upward. If a is less than 0, the parabola has a maximum value because it opens downward. 
Finally, the minimum maximum value of the graph is f of x at its vertex. So the vertex represents the minimum or the maximum. Keep in mind that we also learned the domain and the range. The range plays off the minimum maximum because the range has to either be all greater than the minimum or all less than the maximum. And remember to find the zeros, plug in zero for f of x and solve for x. That's it for section 7.6. If you have any questions, please let me know. Bring them to class. I hope you watch this video. If you watch this video, good job. I should give you a prize, but I'm poor. Sorry.